What's going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, as many of you may know, the Flipper Zero is not actually the first hacking virtual pet. There was one way before that. Introducing the original hacking virtual pet, the Ponigachi. This little guy right here, looking super cool. A little bit of reflection from my lights, no problem, but it's got a great little e-ink display, battery, SD card, all that cool stuff. So for those of you who don't know, you may be asking, what does a Ponagachi do? Well, this little guy right here actually helps crack Wi-Fi passwords. You can carry it around with you and it's gonna sniff all day long. It actually uses AI to figure out the most efficient ways of cracking WPA passwords. This little guy uses A2C based AI and a program called BetterCap to basically go through and figure out the best way to gather information. It can even de-authenticate access points in order to grab those handshakes. It's super cool. Now this project's been out for a very long time, but it's kind of been abandoned within the past couple of years, at least from the main creator. One of the challenges is that everybody kind of uses a very similar uh, WaveShare e-ink display, but the version three is not supported by the original firmware. While it's not the end of the world, myself as well as several other people that I've talked to have actually struggled to get this WaveShare V3 e-ink display to work. So today, I'm going to walk you through the entire process of creating your very own Ponogachi using the WaveShare V3 e-ink display. Put on your learning caps, it's tutorial time! Alright, so let's just show you what we've got here. So we've got our Raspberry Pi Zero right here. Cool little guy. You can do a lot of cool stuff with these. I've got another one for a project later. This one came without the headers, but I added them. Just, you know, be careful when you're soldering them. Make sure it kind of broke the edge over them there. Um, and make sure they're nice and level. You can accidentally push them too far. It's going to give bad connectivity. So yeah, Raspberry Pi Zero. We've got a Pi Sugar. Um, this one's a 1200, yeah, 1200 milliwatt hour battery. Uh, we'll show that later. Uh, we've got the WaveShare V3. Very important. It shows V3 right over whoop, there. So you can see, uh, it's never going to focus, but yeah, it's a V3. It says right there. And we've got our Rabbit Labs little SD card. It's adorable. Look at him out of focus and fun. But yeah, that's going to be the SD card we're using today. Um, so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to download Etcher. So let me show you how to do that on desktop. So the first thing we'll do is download Bellina Etcher. So this program is basically just a program that will be able to save the appropriate files to your SD card. So we'll get download and you're just going to install that normally. I've already installed it, but again, it's just installing programs. That's super easy. Then we're going to go ahead to the Evil Socket Ponegashi repo. And we're going to actually download the zip file right there. Go ahead and download that. We don't need to decompress the zip file, so we'll just leave it as a zip, and then the etcher will be able to transfer that directly to our SD card for us. Once we've got our file and our etcher, go ahead and take our little SD card. We're gonna pop it into our PC. Yes, you are gonna need to plug this into your computer somehow, so not a big deal. Blank SD card, and we can go ahead and get the etcher to get that working for our Ponigachi. So here is Belina etcher. We're gonna go flash from file. We're going to navigate to, this is where I saved the file from the Ponigachi repo. Click open, select target. Now it's going to pop up with the most likely option here. Be very careful. You can actually overwrite any of your hard drives. So yeah, don't do that at all. So we're going to do that. That's our USB mass storage. We're going to select one and just hit flash. Now this is going to take a little while. So we'll sit back, relax and uh, check back to you when it's all set. While we're waiting for that to finish, I might as well go ahead and plug the screen in. Uh, it's pretty simple. I mean, you could plug it in like this and be an idiot. Or you could just plug it in like it's supposed to be, just like so. Just be careful not to bend the pins too badly and don't like stress anything out too bad. It's a little bit of a snug fit, but give it the wiggle and we're in. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so that's done. You'll notice that as soon as it finishes, it's going to ask you if you want to format the disk. It's because the etcher has actually changed the way the partitions on this are formatted in a way that Windows doesn't like. Just hit cancel, and then we can pull our SD card out and get it in the uh, Pornagachi. Go ahead and yank this out, boom, and then put the SD card into the Raspberry Pi. Now, really important thing to notice about this, the Raspberry Pi really won't even like boot. 
unless it's got the SD card installed. So if you get some really weird things happening with these, it may be because you don't have the SD card in. This also has two slots right here. We have one on this side, one kind of towards the middle. This guy right there, the one towards the middle, that is our data port. The other one is solely for power. We want to be able to connect this to our computer. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the one that's for data. It's going to sit here for a while and it's going to really not do much. You will notice the light blinking in there. It's very important to make sure that everything's, you know, plugged in and everything's soldered white. But it will take a little while. So it's going to sit here and we're going to switch over to the desktop and watch the device manager to see it pop up. All right, so we've got our task manager open and we're going to just wait for the first boot. It takes a while. It can take several, several minutes. I've heard people taking as long as 15, 20 minutes. Uh, for me, it's not that long, but we're going to watch the device manager and wait for this to pop up and see what happens. Here we go. It popped up. Now, it actually popped up as the wrong device. It says USB serial device. That is the incorrect device. But luckily, we have a place for drivers. So I'm actually roughly following the Ponegachi New Gorilla Guide by Xylos, I believe it's uh, pronounced. We got the link down below in the description, and they were nice enough to actually give us some drivers. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and download, I believe this is a good driver for it. Wait for this to pop up. Here we go. We're going to save this, and then we're just going to go ahead and decompress it. So extract, and then we'll be able to select this driver to install manually. So now that that is downloaded and decompressed, we can go back into the uh, device manager. Here we go. Um, go to update driver. We're going to browse for drivers. We're going to click from a list of available drivers. We're going to have a disk browse. We're going to go to this file we downloaded and click OK. Now it says USB Ethernet RN disk gadget. Perfect. Next. Now it's going to show up properly. And there it is. Now that that's properly installed as a network adapter, we can close this and actually go to network and internet settings. Go to change adapt, come back. Uh, change adapter options, and then we will see ourselves with our new little ethernet guy. So right now it's ethernet six. For the sake of uh, argument here, let's rename that. So now we know, whoops, hold on a second. Oh shoot, I have to rename it to something else uh, because I already used that when I installed it the first time. So we'll use Poner. Now, for the sake of simplicity, we're actually going to go into properties and we're going to pop into uh, Internet Protocol version 4. And we're going to set this manually so we know exactly what it is. It's going to be tens and some ones. And then one. And this is 255.255.255.0. That's going to make it again so it's easier for us to remember when we need to SSH into that in just a second. Okay. Yes. Okay, now since we're still in our network connections, we're gonna skip a step forward. We're gonna go to my main connected internet right here. So this is my actual ethernet. We're gonna enable internet sharing. So we're gonna click on sharing, we're gonna allow it, and we're gonna allow it to our new Poner network. So that's gonna bridge the internet from basically my wired setup to the uh, Ponegachi so that we can run our script that's gonna update everything and make everything work in a minute. You'll see. So from here, we'll go ahead and open up PowerShell, PowerShell, and then we're going to SSH into this. So it's SSH pi at, and uh, it's the number we just entered, 10.0.0, and this is dot two. Now, I've, it's got some weird fingerprint stuff because I've done this before. I'm just going to say yes, no problem, Y-E-S. And then our password is uh, the default password, which I believe is Raspberry. Here we go, and we're in. And we're going to change the password to begin with. So it's P-A-S-S-W-D. Current password, which is Raspberry. We're going to change it to just password. Make things a little easier. Because I know how to spell that. And then we're going to go sudo S-U, S-U-D-O, sudo S-U, super user. And we're going to change the root password, which is going to allow us to FTP into it. So P-A-S-S-W-D, roots. And then we're going to add password. From here, we want to enable uh, FTP, so we can just copy this command right here, and this is going to open up one of our configuration files that we need to edit. So we can scroll down here, and we're looking for the permit root login uh, line right here, permit root login. We're going to delete the commented out, and we can just go at, whoop, go ahead and delete this part and just go to yes. And then control 
X is going to exit. It wants to know if we want to save. We're going to say yes. We're going to save it as the same file. Then one more thing we need to do is actually to restart the SSH service. So we can copy the command. It's going to be service SSH restart. There we go. And that gets us where we need to be. So now we can log in using an FTP. So I've got FileZilla. That'll work for it. And our host is going to be 10.0.0.2. Password's going to be root. Root. Username's going to be root. Password, since we said it's the password. It's going to be password. And port's going to be 22. And with any luck, this will connect up for us. And yeah, there's some key hashing issues. Again, because I've done this a bunch of times. It's fine. Trusted key. We good. Now, one more thing that we have to do inside of our SSH here is there's a an issue with the DNS. So actually, we can open up this file right here and we can change the name server. This is going to make this all eights. 8.8.8.8. .8 and this is going to make it actually be able to connect to the Internet without the DNS issue that it always runs into. Again, it's all in the guide. It's super simple, super easy. So now that we have our FileZilla running and our FTP in, what we're going to go ahead and do is go to do the, the base down here. I can close root. And then we're going to go to etc. And we're going to find Ponagachi. Doo -doo -doo. Here we go. And then we can go ahead and this is where our configuration files are. Now let me show you what my configuration file looks like. It's really basic, but it'll show you how to make this all work. So here's my super basic configuration file. Basically, I changed the name to Ponagachi. And then you can whitelist some networks that you don't want it to either deauthenticate or try to crack password handshakes from. Really important though, is you wanna add a wave share three. So that's gonna make the screen actually work. So again, it's a really, really basic setup here. Um, we'll save it, but this is gonna be all we need to make this work. And then all I have to do is take this from my folder here. Whoop. We're gonna drag and drop the configuration file right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and overwrite. So that's gonna tell the configuration that we do have the WaveShare V3 screen. So when I, we do our next step, hopefully it'll make the screen work. So when this was made, the WaveShare V2 screen was the current screen. Now it's the V3, there's even a V4. Uh, the problem is that the whole Ponigachi original repo is not very well supported anymore. So it doesn't actually have the V3 screen option. However, again, back to our gorilla guide over here, there is a batch script to automate the process of updating the drivers and stuff. So we're gonna just right click and this is the bash file. If we go to click raw, we can see it right here and we're just gonna go ahead and run that. So just control A and copy and we can just go ahead and right click in here and this should run. Awesome, everything looks super, super good. So all we have to do from here, we can press enter to get back to our command line and we can restart the Ponagachi service. Now you could just unplug this and plug this back in. It would make it work, but we're going to be fancy and use PowerShell because, you know, that's what we like to do. So we're going to do system CTL restart Ponagachi. Press enter and it's going to restart our Ponigachi. And I'll uh, immediately switch it over to the, the top over screen. You can see how this runs. You can see it's blinking over and over again, trying to figure out what it wants to do. But if we give them just a second, these should pop right up in here. Move it up. Hey, there we go. Now you'll notice that it looks a little sketchy starting off. It's because it's an e-ink display. All e-ink displays, it takes a few kind of refreshes for them to look good. So if we sit here and wait for a little bit, it'll look better and better as it goes. Well, actually, come to think of it, right now it's plugged into the data mode. The data cable doesn't really refresh the screen. So let's just go ahead and unplug him. Yeah. And then we'll plug him back into, boom. This is just the power port. The power port's gonna allow the screen to update over and over again. Again, when it's in manual mode, which is when it's connected to the computer, it doesn't refresh quite as often. So yeah, let's give it a second and see it wake up. Now you'll notice when it restarts, it flashes a bunch of times, which really just, again, it's the refreshing of the screen, which is, actually makes the screen go completely, I guess, white, or completely blank. Other cool thing, there we go. So now we're popping back up and now you can see again, it's super kinda, super sketchy looking for the moment, but as soon as it starts updating, it'll look better and better and better. This guy's awesome. 
So yeah, that's basically the idea right there. So let me go ahead and hook the battery up to it, and I'll show you how to do that as well. It's not hard to do, but I do like getting the whole thing working before I put the battery on. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this and unplug the screen right here. Ugh. Be really careful unplugging the screen. This is exactly how you bend pins. This is how I killed my first screen. So yeah, just be super careful. Give it the old wiggle wiggle. Be nice to it. Hey, this turned off. Come back. Cool. So here's the pie sugar battery. It's a, um, what did I say? 1200 milliamp hour. I think I said milliwatt hour because I'm dumb. Um, but yeah, it works super good. And then it does have a magnet here, which is cool. So it kind of magnets all together. Super cool. And then it uses pogo pins. So if I get real close up and personal here with the, cam with the camera, yeah, we go. Oh. You can see that these little pins actually bounce. So it's what makes it so it's you don't have to actually solder it to the board. So this just literally sits on top of here like so. Make sure it's off. Really good point. If you turn it on, I don't know if the little light turn on. Eh. Little tiny switch light. Oh, that's the button. Derp on. Yeah, make sure this light's off when we're connecting it. So let me grab my screwdriver. We'll get that going. Screwdriver. We've got some screws. One, two, three, four. And then let's see. Flip this over to the right side. This just sits nicely on top like so. Now, be really careful to line up the header pins, where one, two, three, right there, with those pogos on there. It's super, super important that those are lined up. We're gonna drop this in here first, and then screw this in as awkwardly as humanly possible. Now, I'm gonna screw this in like 90% of the way, but not quite all the way, just to make sure that I get everything lined up, because the other screws are gonna help line the pogo pins up. So we've got that one. Eh. Whoops screwdriver backwards. Linustechtips.com for screwdriver. And now I'm putting this in crooked because, again, it's always so awkward installing these things when you're on camera. There we go. Much better. Little ASMR screwdriver magic. All right. They can go kind of snug. Don't go too much. You'll definitely break them. Again, carefully line them up. Get it crooked the first time, then get it right. Good. Snug this first one up a little bit more. And again, these are just snug. These are not tight, tight. It ain't going anywhere, trust me. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab our last screw. I don't think these are magnetic, so... Yep, nope, definitely not magnetic. Alrighty, careful, careful. Line it up. And get it screwed in. Again, I'm crooked, because bad angle. There we go. And we have four screws in, hooray! Now we can just go ahead and connect our screen. Again, be careful, but this should be the last time we have to do that. Line it up again, boom, boom, boom. And then give it the old squeeze. There we go, wiggle, wiggle. The little magnet on the uh, battery makes it snap right in. Flip the switch, and with any luck, boom. Hey, we got a green light down here that's on, so now we know it's working. Flash, 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 flash. And we can sit that here, and that should uh, boot up in just a second. And there's the screen resetting a bunch of times, and it'll show up in just a second. Hey, we're back in business. So I went ahead and printed this cool case. This is a little two-piece case. It works pretty well for this, and let's drop them in there. One thing to note is that the SD card kind of gets in the way when putting it in, so you kind of angle it down. Ideally, I guess you could unplug the SD card, but I think I can scooch this in. There we go, very carefully without it. This ribbon cable, see that guy? That, that little ribbon cable does not want to exist anymore. It's looking for any reason whatsoever to get damaged, including putting this case on. So push this down a little bit, and then push the ribbon cable down itself. Little wiggle wiggle, and that should be just fine. Boom, boom, boom. So yeah, now we've got our cute little Ponegachi, but there's a few more things we can do, so let's take a look. Go ahead and plug this back into our computer, and again, remember that right there, the middle one, the middle one, the one that's more towards the middle. That guy's our manual mode that actually takes data. It's gonna connect there, and you can't really see, but down in that bottom corner, it's gonna say M-A-N-U for manual. So give it a second, we're gonna be manual mode. 
So let's pop over to desktop and I can show you a few little settings you can tweak around for fun. So if we go back into our FileZilla here, am I still connected? I'm disconnected. So if I hit reconnect, theoretically it should connect no problem. Do, do, do. There we are, cool, it's connecting. So let's open up our configuration file right here. So let's open notepad and then we can drag us into here and take a look at it. So we can change the name. So I'm gonna change this to Squatch Agachi. Squatch Agachi. Cool. So now it's gonna actually change the name of the Ponegachi to, uh, you know, Squatch Agachi, which is always fun. So we can save this, close that, and all we have to do is upload this to that folder and overwrite it. And then once this updates, we're gonna have a brand new name for our Ponegachi. Now, interestingly enough, there's actually a typo in uh, the pull request that we pulled in before. So if we go ahead and go to it's whoops, close this uh, user and local, then go ahead and go to Python 3.7. Whoops. Oh, it's lib. There we go. Lib Python 3.7 distribution packages. And then it's under do 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 do. There we go. Ponegachi. There we go, Ponegachi, and then UI, HW, and then Waveshare3.py. So we're actually going to view slash edit. Okay, there we go. And right here, the fonts are actually backwards. So instead of 10, 8, let's see, 10, 8, 25, 25, 9, this is supposed to be a 35. Whoops. So we can just save this. When we close that, it's going to ask if you want to update it, which we do. So that's gonna update that as well. So let me switch back to the desktop and we'll restart and we'll see what's going on here. All right, just doing a quick little update here. And in just a second, the screen will pop back on and we can see ourselves with our new Squatchagachi. Oh, he's coming on. Yeah, you can, it's so cool watching the screen kind of slowly come to life. But yeah, face is a little bit bigger and it says Squatchagachi up here. So that's pretty cool. I got one more thing that we can show you right now. Let me hook it back up. So we're gonna hop back into our FTP. We're gonna go to user slash local slash lib slash Python, Python 3.7 slash disk packages slash Ponegashi slash UI. We're gonna go ahead and edit the view.py file. So what we're actually gonna do right now, we're gonna go ahead and invert the colors. So we're looking for white and black. So we're gonna change white to zero zero. We're gonna change black to FF. Save this and close it. It's gonna overwrite. Boom, boom. Easy peasy. We can switch back over and see what happens. One quick restart later. And we've got dark mode Squatchagachi. Super cool. Give him a second to refresh. Darken up some of them pixels. Yeah, I don't know what, why it's so satisfying watching the, uh, the O, OLEDs watching the e-ink display populate like this but it look kind of looks like it's snowing for a minute but yeah really really cool so those are just a few things you can do just with the aesthetics of a, of a Ponegachi so there you have it we got ourselves our own Ponegachi now I know there's a ton of other stuff to do with plugins and all the other features and I can go over that in a later video but today I really wanted to show you exactly how to install it using that Waveshare v3 screen I know it seems pretty simple, but I actually spent the better half of my morning dialing in the procedure exactly to make sure that everything works the first time for everybody. So I hope if you try this and you follow every single step in order, everything works out as easily as it did here. Thanks again for watching. This is another one of those project videos. I like doing things that are a little outside of Flipper because I know it interests a larger audience. And hey, maybe it'll get you to make one of these as well. I've got another Raspberry Pi Zero. I've got another really cool project coming up for you. So stay tuned. But for now, thanks for watching. Take it easy.